As rain is falling and knocking down dust across the county, that moisture can possibly lend itself to the growth of the fungus that causes Valley fever. The infection is prevalent here in Kern County, but researchers at a Central California University are hoping to improve how Valley fever is diagnosed and treated. And 23 ABC's Brandon Johansson joining us now in studio with what those researchers found and how it could affect patients here. Brandon? Yeah, Tim and Jessica, one of the biggest issues with Valley fever is that it's unknown why some people get infected and get severely sick, while others get infected and barely see symptoms at all. That's the issue that new research from UC Merced is trying to solve and people who are battling infection right here in Kern County say that type of research is welcome. It's a rainy day in Kern County, but when the soil dries, concerns about valley fever will rise again. Everybody's like, well, how come you got it so bad? And I don't know. Rob Purdy has been concerned about the infection for a long time after he was diagnosed in 2012. I'm on the severe side. So uh, I have the, I'm in that one to 4% of chronic patients. Valley fever can be found in someone after they inhale the coccidiotes fungus. In Kern County, particularly the western side of the county, is a hotbed for that fungus. When someone gets a severe case, a laundry list of symptoms and side effects can come with it, including potentially death. The little bump on my head is actually a port where they will go in every four weeks now and give me an injection of medicine directly into my brain to control the valley fever because nothing kills it. With no vaccine or cure available, proper treatment is key. That's where Katrina Hoyer and her team at UC Merced come in. Oh boy, we started this project probably about three or four years ago. It's currently unknown what makes some people more susceptible to the most severe form of valley fever, and it's hard to tell how bad the infection will be when diagnosed. That's an issue because the treatment for valley fever is expensive and can be hard on the body, so doctors don't always treat aggressively. Because it is a kind of orphan and understudied um, infection, there's a lot of questions to ask. The research done at UC Merced found that people with more regulatory T cells in their body are more susceptible to chronic infection. Hoyer believes that too many of those cells prevent the body from fighting the infection off. And she's hoping that more research will lead to her ultimate goal. To see if we can use this information to predict um, disease outcome on the day that we diagnose the patients. According to UC Merced, 60% of people infected clear the fungus automatically. About 35% will show symptoms but only need mild treatment, and up to 4% of patients develop a severe infection. And Purdy falls into that latter group. But he's hoping this research and others like it will save others from the same fate. And it's not because I have to live with it, it's because I don't want you to have to live with it, or your neighbors, or my neighbors, or my family, or your family to have to live with it. Now, Professor Hoyer up at UC Merced is hoping to conduct a larger study with more patients once UC Merced opens a brand new medical facility in 2020. Of course, the fight against Valley Fever continues here at home. The Valley Fever Institute over at Kern Medical is set to open its permanent facility next year. In studio, Brandon Johansson, 23ABC News. Brandon, thanks for that.